A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver! Let's go, big pole! I'm Silver! One morning, after long years of discouragement that at times brought Caleb Bixby and his wife to the verge of starvation, the old prospector was in high spirits. He was up early. He wore his good suit and a fresh shave. Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree, Sarah. I got a hunch today is going to be my big day. Caleb, sit yourself down there a minute. Got to hurry, Sarah. The man at the assay office told me he'd have the report for me this morning. Caleb, now you listen to me. I've kept quiet for a long time, but I've noticed it's not the men that find the gold mines that are comfortable and well off. Then who in time... Caleb, why don't we open a little store of some sort? Something where you won't have to be heading for the hills all the time. Breaking your back and breaking your heart. Me? Open a store? Why not, Caleb? We could borrow the cash. I'm no storekeeper. I'm a gold miner. Take that burrow of yours, Caleb. What about the burrow? If that burrow had his choice between staying in the lush grazing or heading into them hills and wearing down his hoofs, which do you reckon he'd choose? Why, I reckon the lazy coyote would choose the grazing. Just so. And, Caleb, when I married you, I figured you had more sense than a burrow. Yes, I... What? Why, Dad read it, Sarah. I want you to make a promise. Well... Caleb, you're going to the assay office to get the report on the last ore you left there. Uh-huh. Promise me you'll give it up if it don't show pay dirt. Give up? I'm not a man to give up, Sarah. Never gave up in all my life. For I... me, Caleb. W will you promise that? Well, I'll think it over. Hey, doggone boots getting tired. Remember now, Caleb, if you haven't struck it this time, you're not going to prospect no more. I'll think it over, Sarah. That's all I can say. Even if you struck it, which it means your trouble's just begun. Finding of the goals, the beginning of no end of trouble, Caleb. I'll think it over, Sarah. Now you gotta be content with that. Leading his faithful old burrow, Caleb Bixby headed for the assay office, and as usual, his hopes were high. As he approached, he noticed an Indian standing in the shade of the frame building. Who? Oh, Who oh, you? Howdy, Indian! Howdy! Is the boss man inside there? Boss man? Me not know. By ginger, I'll blame soon find out. Injun, 
You stand right where you are. What for? You stay right there, Injun. And in a couple of minutes, you may be looking at a millionaire walking out of that there door. A millionaire, that's what. And when I say millionaire, I mean me. You strike him gold? You wait and see. You just stand right there. And if I'm right, I'll make you a present of the best doggone blanket that can be had in the whole of the Denver region. Well, hi there, Caleb. You back again for more bad news? I wonder what Caleb would do if he ever got a real good sample of ore. Reckon he'd survive the shot? Huh? <laughs> You'll sing a different tune when you hear the report on my oar. How many years have we been hearing them same words, boy? <laughs> yeah, and how many years has Caleb been eating them, huh? No. <laughs> Just you wait. I'm going to be rich on this here strike. I got it this time. Where's the claim at this time? Not far. Maybe about two, three hours by burrow. Which means 30 minutes by foot, the way that critter of yours travels. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb, you right, would spend as much time backing up as going forward. Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, you state your claim yet, Caleb? No. If he'd staked every claim from which he fetched samples, he'd have half a Colorado stake by now. Oh, <laughs> go on with your sawtooth. Hey, Caleb, here comes Fleming. Reckon he's got your report for you. Oh, Mr. Fleming, what's the news, eh? You needn't be afraid to say it right out in front of the boys here. They might be a bit jealous, but it won't hurt him none. Yeah. Yeah. Back here with me, Caleb. Why... Sure thing. I want to speak to you alone. Hey, is he struck it this time, Fleming? Come into the back room with me, Caleb. Well, there's nothing wrong, is there? Nope. This way, Caleb. Hey, Caleb, we'll be waiting to hear what what. Now close that door so those gents out there won't hear what I have to tell you. There. Now sit down here, Caleb. All right. That's it. Now then, who knows you brought these samples in to me? Why, gosh, you reckon most everyone does. Why? Did you tell anyone where you found them? Sure not. I don't tell all I know. Are they any good? Well, that ore will say a couple of hundred dollars a ton. It will. It isn't the best ore, but it's good. Then I, I struck it rich. You found gold. But, gosh, uh, Gosh, say that again. You have found gold. But, yeah! Oh, oh, wait a minute. Take it easy, oh, Caleb. I, Take it easy. Well, Until you get your claim staked out and registered, you've got no more right to that land than the next man. I'll attend to that right away. I'll set out first thing in the morning to stake my claim. Well, listen to me first. There's a pack of claim jumpers around here. You'll have to watch yourself, Caleb. First thing you know, someone else will have that claim staked. Then you'll be right where you were before. You see, it's one thing to find gold and another thing to hang on to it. Yeah, I know that. I'll be on guard, all right. They won't do me out of it, no, sir. All right, now sit still a minute longer. I've got to tell my wife. I've got to tell Sarah. Now oh, listen to me, you old fool. Sit down. <clears throat> now then, will you take a little advice from me? Sure thing. That... Stake and register that claim. Then come to me. I know a couple of men from the syndicate. They'll buy you out. They'll give you more cash than you ever saw. And a payment every month for the rest of your life. That'll save you working the claim. <clears throat> you think I ought to sell out right away? Well, if you were a younger man, Caleb, I'd say work it yourself. But at your age, the best thing would be to sell half interest in it. And I'll arrange for you to meet the men that can buy it. Now then, you talk that over with Sarah. Meanwhile, get your title to the property. I sure will. And until then, keep your mouth shut. Oh, I will. I will. Now I've got to go tell Sarah. Yahoo! Oh, yeah, I struck it, boys. I struck it rich. You did? Now I'm going to be rich. Yahoo! Indian, I struck it. You just come with me and I'll give you a present. You talk too much. I got to tell everyone I'm rich. Let me go now. Huh? Hey, wait, Indian. Get him up, Scott. Come on, the can't be. We'll celebrate. Hey, 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 come on, you come on with me. No, no sir. I'm no, not come on no now. Cafe. No, sir. Huh? I'm going home and tell my wife I struck it rich. Tonto hurried to a small camp where the Lone Ranger waited. He told about Caleb's fortune. 
Meanwhile, Caleb hurried home while other men went to the cafe to spread the news. In the cafe, a half-breed named Vega called the bartender to a corner and spoke in low tones. What do you want of me, Vega? I wish to speak about gold. Huh? <laughs> I thought that would make you listen. You will talk with me now, Senor Barton. Well, uh, give me an idea what you got to say. If uh, without risk you could own a gold claim, you would uh, pay me well for it? What claim? <laughs> Amigo, I cannot tell you that. It will be your claim. At times you go to hunt for gold, the next time you go, you find that gold. How will I? I fix it so you'll have a map. I tell you where to go. I, too, will go there with my friend, but we will be too late, amigo. You understand? You will be there first. Yeah. Just how can that be worked? If you know where there's a strike, why don't you stake it yourself? Oh, me, senor, I could not. I have never go prospecting. People would be suspicious if I were to find gold. Yeah, that's right. If you were to show up with a gold claim, everyone would know you jumped it. But with me, it'd be different. See, si, senor. You give me half of what you find, huh? That's fair enough. And you give me cash now, in advance? You tell me your scheme first, and I'll see how I like it. Oh, see, si, amigo, see, si, see. Si. Uh, I alone can do it because Senor Bixby looks on me as a very good friend. You're speaking of Caleb Bixby's claim? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Let's hear your scheme. Hardly able to realize their good fortune... Caleb and Sarah spent the day talking about their plans for the future. It was nearly dark when Sarah stopped daydreaming. Oh, my sakes alive, Caleb. It's getting dark outside. I clean forgot about supper. What's the difference, Sarah? Can't eat anyhow. I'm so excited. I never seen the time you couldn't eat, Caleb. Just imagine us being rich. Well, we're not rich yet. I still can't believe it's true. I'll feel better when I see the actual cash coming in. It'll come. It'll come. Can't stop it now. Nothing's going to stop us from being rich. We won't have to worry no more. Why, sakes alive, Sarah. I already got a chance to sell half interest in the claim. Just sit back and count the money without doing a lick of work. Oh, it seems almost too good to be true. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll go and stake my claim. Oh, dear, dear, I won't sleep a wink tonight for thinking about it. Sleep? Who in tarnation wants to sleep? What's that? The window. Look, someone... Oh, Sarah. Sarah. I... A crash of glass and the sound of a heavy six-gun rang through the night. It was heard by the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, in their camp not far distant. Tonto, that was a 44. Ah. Couldn't have come from the town. That would be too far away. Must be from some cabin near here. We'll investigate, Kimosabi. I thought I heard glass breaking as well as a shot. Ah, uh, is that right? Here, Silver. Here, boy. Here. Here, Scout. <laughs> ready, Tonto? Uh, me ready. Ready, Silver. All right, follow me then. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Caleb had been hit in the chest by the bullet that came through his window. He lay on the floor gasping while Sarah bent over him. Sarah, Sarah, look outside. Thought I heard someone riding away. Never mind them. Never mind anybody outside, Caleb. How bad are you hurt? Where'd they get you? Here. Let me see it. Let me get that shirt off. Oh. See how bad it Sarah, is. Sarah, you've got to... rest easy, Caleb, honey. Don't talk none. I'll have it fixed up in a minute. Only crackers was in the... The gold claim. They was doing it quiet, for... Quiet, Caleb. Sarah, they found out about our fortune. That's it. My quiet, Caleb. Sarah, just when we... We were set for... To get rich. Sarah, who's that? Look outside. A couple of horses stopped outside, Caleb. Wait till I get that rifle. Don't be afraid to shoot, Sarah. Someone's out to get us. You be ready to shoot to kill. Right. But it's a masked man. Stand back. Stand where you are, mister. I've got this rifle on you. I'm ready to shoot to kill. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger came to Caleb's house to investigate a gunshot, he was met at the door by Sarah, who held a heavy rifle. Put down that rifle. We're here to help you. Take a look at that man, Toto. See ah. how badly he's hurt. Wait, you're mad. I'll take that rifle. No. Your husband needs attention. Sarah, gets the gold mine. No good to me now. Won't live to see the riches. Take it easy, Bixby. Gold. You're not going to die. Toto's going to take care of you. How are you, anyway? What are you doing here, wearing a mask? And... We want to help you. Gold. Toto can dress Caleb's wound. Did you shoot Caleb? No, Mrs. Bixby. But you know his name. Tonto saw your husband this morning when he was told about his gold. But if you didn't shoot Caleb, who did? We'll try to find that out after Tonto's taken care of him. Why, this time the murderer's gotten clean away. I'll look around outside. Stay with him, Tonto. Do all you can. Oh, is, clean. is he going to live? Ah, uh, him get well. Are you sure? Are you sure of that? Me sure. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, Caleb. You will have to ride for the claim come morning. You've got to get there. Stake it out. Or it'll be lost to you. Well, never mind that, Caleb. Only thing I care about is to see you well again. Sarah, looks like this engine knows what he's doing. I'll see you at the door now. Sakes alive, so many things happening all in one day. Oh, it's enough to make a person dizzy. Amigo. Oh, it's you, eh? Vega. Oh, gone. I, I had some tough luck. Senor, what is the matter? You are hurt? Been shot, Vega. Some ornery coyote tried to finish me off before I could stake my claim. Reckon you heard about that. See, si, senor, I hear about it in the cafe. What are folks saying about it, Vega? Are there any of them that might have drilled, Caleb? I do not know that. I only know others go to find gold, too. Oh, the others are starting out to try and do what I done, eh? See, si. senor Barton, he is to go tomorrow. Oh, he is, eh? Maybe he wants me out of the way. See, si, but you, amigo, you have not staked your claim yet. It's important you stake the claim at once. I don't see how. I, uh, I would go in your place if you would trust me that far. Of course we trust you, Vega. Not a case of trusting anyone. You couldn't stake a claim in my name. Oh, doggone it, Sarah. After all these years of looking for gold, it'd be just my luck if Barton got the place staked out ahead of me. Amigo, I have the idea. Yeah? Perhaps the senora could go in your place if the trip is not too difficult. I would be glad to accompany her. But I don't know where it is. Perhaps uh, Senor could make the map. A map? Yes, I reckon I could. Ah, that is it. You make the map and I will go with the Senora. Would, would you do it, Sarah? Would you go stake that land? Of course. I'll fix the map tonight, Vega. Now I'll come into town in the morning, Vega, and I'll have the map with me. Muy bien, then. I will see you in the morning. <laughs> half an hour after Vega had left Caleb's home when the Lone Ranger rode up in the moonlight and dismounted at the door. Tonto was there to meet him. Tonto, who was here? A feller named Vega. I found very clear tracks going away from this house. Now you followed him? That's right. And they circled right back here. Tonto, this man Vega's the one who shot Caleb. Ah, and Caleb think him plenty good friend. Then Caleb's got to learn the truth. Now wait, let me tell you about map. Map? Ah, Caleb make a map for Vega. Him go help woman stake claim. You mean to say that Caleb is trusting Vega with his secret? Ah, you tell him, Caleb, Vega shoot. Caleb not believe. I see. Caleb has little reason to believe what I tell him. Now listen, Toto. We'll have to have a lot of proof before Caleb will believe that Vega shot him. following morning, Sarah went to town as soon as the sun was up. She drew Caleb's old mule to a slow halt in front of the cafe where Vega was waiting. Ah, senora, you are right on time. That's right, and I'm set for riding. You have the map? Yes. Bueno. Now, uh, perhaps you will let me see the map so I know where we go. Oh, here it is. Ah. Well, it is well drawn. And we're to stake the claim right at the end of the dotted line. Bueno. What about Barton? You said he was to start out this morning. That is right, senora. He has already started. Are you all ready to go? Oh, one moment. I must go into the cafe to get a package of food. <laughs> we may get hungry, huh? Oh, I'll wait right here, Vega. Uh, see, si, senora. 
Barton. Barton, look here. You got the map? Of course I have the map. I told you I'd have it. Here, see for yourself. <laughs> Good for you. Work quickly. Make a copy of it. I got a pencil paper already here. Keep back from the window. The senora thinks you have already started out to look for gold. It won't take me long to copy this. Give us time to get out of town before you start. Yeah, Savvy. You will have to ride in a circle to get ahead of us. I'll handle that all right. You just travel slow. <laughs> It was nearly noon. Sara and Vega were still on the trail that wound in and out through the rock-strewn mountains. Then as they rounded a curve, they saw three horsemen on the trail just ahead. Oh, oh there. Oh, sakes alive, it's the messman. Well, what is and it? And Mr. Fleming. Well, howdy, Mr. Bixby. The sheriff's here, too. Hey, come over here, Sheriff. Howdy, ma'am. I see you and Vega got here all right. What does this mean? Who is this master, hombre? I told you about him, Vega. That Indian that took care of Caleb is his friend. So... He's the one who shot your husband. You know better than that, Vega. What do you mean? Sir, this masked man called on me at dawn this morning. After I heard what he had to say, I got Fleming from the assay office and came along here with him. We've been waiting on the trail for you, Mrs. Bixby. Waiting? But how, how do you know where we were coming? We're not the only ones who know. Sir, according to this masked man, the man you're counting on as a friend is the one who shot your husband. What? What do you mean? Vega... I mean you. Why, you hold it. Don't finish that draw. Well, take it easy, Vega. Me and Fleming still have open minds. How dare you say Vega shot Caleb? Mrs. Bixby, his tracks were quite clear outside your house. I followed them. He rode away and circled right back to the house. That is not true. Mine were not the only tracks near that house. Yes, that's true. My tracks were there, too. And so were Tonto's. You were the one who shot Caleb. Sheriff... This man is the one who tried to kill him. If that's true, Vega, we'll find it out plenty soon. We're going to travel along with you folks until you stake your claim. I don't see no reason to object to that. Sakes alive, Sheriff. I'll be downright glad to have you with me. I am insulted. I demand that this Just man... Just a be... minute, Vega. Look here, mister. Why would Vega shoot Caleb? Because he and a friend wanted to steal your husband's claim. <gasps> that is not true. Vega wanted Caleb to draw a map showing how to reach the gold. That's what Caleb did. Yes, of course. I heard you, Vega. I was close by when you and Barton talked last night, after you had left Caleb's. Lies, lies, nothing but lies. Fleming, Sheriff, uh, Senora, you cannot believe what this man tells you. I told you, Vega, we was keeping our minds wide open. We're waiting to be shown. Let's follow the map. Yeah, come on. Have you got that map, Vega? Yeah, uh, of course he's got it. I gave it to him. All right, then. You go right ahead. Follow that map to the end. And we'll tag along. Look ahead. Isn't that big rock there the end of the trail? Yes, it is. Barton's there. He's driving stakes. This is a frame up. Hold it, Vega. Let's see what Barton has to say. Barton, what are you doing here? Well, howdy. What sort of party is this? It might be a surprise party for you, Barton. You just any silver? Staking a claim, huh, Barton? Yeah, after Caleb's luck, I decided to do a little prospecting. We'll have a look at the map you followed. Map? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I can make myself clear. Come here. Uh, let go of Let's me. see what you have in your pockets. No, no. No, wait, listen. Sheriff, who is this masked man? What's the idea of letting him go through my pockets? We're waiting to see what the idea is. Maybe this will explain. Give me that. Oh, not so fast. Here. Take a look at this, Sheriff. Here. Yeah. See if this isn't a copy of the map Bixby gave to Vega. I drew that map myself. I was out here once before. Too thin, I... Barton. That won't go. Is the map the same? Yes. What about it, Vega? I, I do not know. Vega, I have... there's only one way Barton could have got that map. You let him see it. You let him copy it. And he came here ahead of us. It's just like that math man said. Now, wait a minute. Now, listen to me. I'm not admitting a thing, see? But there's one thing you can't deny. I've got my stakes in that land, and I'm going to file my claim to it. Sheriff, you know enough law to know that the land goes to the first one who gets it staked. That's all right. You're welcome to it. Welcome to it? He is not. Oh, Caleb spent a lifetime trying Just to get Just a minute, that... sir. That land is worthless. Oh, what, 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 when Caleb drew the map... 
The dotted line ended at that rock, a quarter of a mile on the back trail. What? Yes. I was in your house last night, Sarah. I made a little change on the map. I extended Caleb's line. You changed it? Yes. If you go back on the trail to that big rock and stake a claim, you'll get the gold that Caleb found. And we'll help you, Sheriff. We sure will. Now, wait, listen. The law wants you, Barton. And you too, Vegas. No, no. You've got nothing against me. If this isn't Caleb's property, you can't accuse me of jumping any claim. Who said anything about claim jumping? We're taking you in along with Vega for attempted murder. No, no, you can't do that. Why didn't I shoot to kill Shut up, you fool. So you did shoot, Caleb. Come on, come here. What have I said? You've said plenty. I won't go. Get back, all of you. I'll shoot the first one who tries to take me. You will? Oh! oh. That'll hold you, Barton. If you want more gunplay, just say so. Oh, my arm. My arm. Now you'll go back to town peaceable. Fleming, take Vega's gun. Good. Hey, got it. That's it. You don't need me now, Sheriff. Steady, big fella. Well, you've done your part, mister. We'll carry on from here. You go on back and tell Caleb that Sarah will soon be home with papers showing that Caleb owns a gold claim. Come on, Silver. You, Vega. The thing that we trusted you. Why, you are... There, there, that's oh. all right, Sarah. Take it easy. The law will deal with this crook. My arm. My arm is busted. Yeah? Well, Barton, it serves you right. You should have known better than to try to pull a gun against the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 